Hey everybody, it's uh, Christopher Dixonline Farm, and I'm making a video today about something that happened this week on YouTube with Michael Fremer. Uh, he's got a website, Analog Planet. He is a big champion of analog and vinyl recordings. If you've ever watched him, he's very entertaining. He's also very divisive and slightly abrasive to <laughs> many people, but he is always entertaining. He made a couple of DVDs about uh, turntables, which are uh, fun to watch, especially if you like this stuff. I don't agree with everything he says, but you know that's okay. You are allowed to disagree with people and what their conclusions are. I had a guy uh, this week and he was uh, pretty rude to me in my comments and um, he attributed several things to me uh, about how I'm damaging uh, the hobby and people who watch my videos. I am poisoning the waters. Um, but he's also attributing things uh, to me that he said I've said, which I, I never actually said. Um, but the problem is is that he's lumping me in with a group of people and not actually my words and thoughts and and even still that they're just my opinions all these things are my opinions um you know this is i'm not a professor i am not a reference guide i'm a guy i'm a guy who's talking to uh a camera and people uh, get to watch that that's all i am anyway michael fremer did a video comparing the brand new as techniques uh 1200 slg Right, the SL1200G, uh, so the new version of the uh, classic uh, direct drive table, compared against his Continuum uh, Caliburn. Uh, the Caliburn sells anywhere between eighty to two hundred thousand dollars, depending on when you bought it and who you buy it from or whatever. But you know, we'll say the table just as a quick price is fifteen hundred dollars, opposed to the Techniques, which uh, sells for about two thousand dollars. Uh, the G maybe sells less. I'm not sure. But anyway, you get the idea. He did a sample on YouTube. He said he may or may not uh, flip the video with the audio so the table you're looking at is not what you're hearing. Okay? And put it up on YouTube to let people watch. He did a second video with a different type of recording, a vocal recording, because people were saying, well, that was uh, percussion, the first sample. And the second one, let's hear voice. And he kept the video the same. Here's the interesting thing. Um, I did a sample test, I got to listen, and I could clearly hear a difference between the two. On the first video, I do believe that he switched the tables. He hasn't published results yet, but I looked online on his audio file uh, comment section, you know, where all the audio files are. They all basically agree that he switched the video, that uh, the Techniques video is the Caliburn table, and the Caliburn video is the Techniques table. And what I heard in difference in quality they also said, I did not read beforehand, so I was not influenced that way, but the different critiques I had, um, they both sounded okay. Well, they both sounded great, rather. But, uh, you know, one wasn't huge, but I did hear a difference, and I much preferred the Caliburn. Mm. Okay. Now, when you got to the vocal section, the, the other video, didn't notice quite nearly the difference to me, uh, but that's okay but here's the interesting thing so when I was watching the video of course I didn't know whether he switched the tables or not but there's a pause in between the audio right when there was the pause I clearly heard the difference when I did a quick hot switch AB the differences were not nearly as big uh, as I thought they were what does that mean I don't know what that means Honestly, it's a flawed test because, you know, one, I'm doing it on YouTube, right? Who knows what compressions, artifacts, things like that. Two, it's not a blind test. It's sort of blind because I don't know which table is really which, but still, I could be influenced. And uh, the interesting thing that I've been reading about lately, and I still have no particular opinion on that, is that we have an audio memory. What we actually hear is not... It, a lot of it's based on other factors. It's not like, oh, we hear it and we know it. But there's a lot of processing going on in our brains. We're being influenced by a lot of different things. And uh, of course, you know this uh, for a fact. You ever listen to your stereo and like, wow, this sounds like crap. And you, it was after a long day working. You just wanted to relax and all of a sudden you're like, hey, this doesn't sound that great. And then there are other times you listen to the exact same thing, exact same setup, exact same volume. This sounds wonderful. We are influenced by things. This is uh, not a, uh, an opinion. That is a fact. That is easily <laughs> shown in studies. However, here's the second part of what, what's interesting. All right, so the quick AB, I couldn't qu tell quite a difference. I don't know what that means. 
though I agreed with what everyone said, I did prefer what most likely is the Calamer, uh, at least when it came to percussion music. With the vocal music, I did not hear nearly a startling difference. I uh, talked privately to uh, Baraka P. Dub. He also confirmed what I uh, had felt. He actually looked at the video, uh, the audio on, on, on a, uh, a uh, spectrograph, frequency analyzer, you know, all those little different things that you can look at in uh, Audacity and confirmed different things that, you know, he heard, he could visually see. Hopefully he does a video on that. Hopefully I just put him on the uh, spot by, by saying that. But everyone agrees that they could clearly hear a difference between the two things. Even on YouTube, right? With the digital. So, all the different arguments that you always hear about how things can't be captured, you know, that magic. Well, we clearly heard the difference between the two, even on YouTube, being digitized. Being recorded, digitized by Michael Fremer with his equipment, and being re-digitized again by YouTube. And uh, I actually did not listen at the best bitrate uh, quality, um, and I clearly heard things. So, uh, and at least the first time I listened to it. So, what... What does that tell us? Well, in my personal experience, when I've digitized a record, and I did this back with my high resolution uh, shootout, if you participated in that, where this is the part of the test you couldn't do, is if I listened to my digitized file and the live playback of that turntable, I could not hear the difference between either the digitized version or my turntable because they're the exact same thing, right? I'm playing a digital file on my equipment and I'm playing a turntable that I recorded the digital file on my equipment. And uh, a lot of things that I've been reading, um, one of my goals last year was to read all the um, forum posts on Steve Hoffman forum, the audiophile Steve Hoffman uh, forums. Uh, I read about the music section, which had about 8,300 pages of, I just picked the ones that interest me. And it took all year and a month, and I got through all the things that interest me. I'm all caught up, and now I'm actually doing the hardware. Hardware I've been paying attention to the last few years, reading every day. So I'm right now on page 650 of 1900. So it's going to take me a little bit of time. However, those threads are um, pretty lengthy and a lot of debate, so it's actually a little more careful reading. Uh, so it may take me just as long to go through those. But the point is people on the Steve Hoffman form, a lot of them have had the same experience, that the needle drops that they make sound identical to the vinyl being played back. Now, I talked to Dr. Deadwax uh, on Facebook. He's still out there. He's busy. He'll come back and make a video one day, I'm sure. But uh, he has had the opposite experience, where they clearly heard a difference between the turntable and a digital playback in the same room. Now, of course, you can make the argument, and you're completely right in making this argument uh, out there, uh, people who don't like me, that maybe my playback equipment is crappy. And you could absolutely uh, be right. I have not done a scientific study on this. I've just done a personal experience test on this. Uh, just like you did a personal experience test listening to cables and switching them out, and then 30 seconds later, or a minute later, two minutes later, evaluating it, I did the same level of scientific uh, research on this. I just used my own experience several times where I did A, B, back and forth on different things that I've recorded. That's just my experience with my equipment. Now, uh, other people on the Steve Hoffman forum, I don't know what equipment they've used, what variables, but a lot of them have also had the same experience. So we're going to go with a lot of people have the experience that the digital playback of a vinyl recording sounds the same or at least close enough where it doesn't matter and interestingly enough this is kind of proven by these videos right so anybody who goes on about analog and all about the differences uh, these people did that shootout and they clearly heard the difference between the two things and the preference and how great it sounded i watched a lot of old michael fremer um conversations, lectures, panel discussions, you know, I've done that too, because I'm, again, I, I do like reading about the stuff and learning. Um, he said in one video that um, it was a playback of his copy of an album, 
and he, you know, for Mr. Analog, that the vinyl playback's always best, he had said that his digital file playback from his continuum uh, caliber and table was better than what they were playing back at this one location in a hi-fi store uh, live. So it it doesn't confirm anything, but that is one instance where he did say that the digital file playback of a needle drop was better than the live. Um, of course, they weren't apples to apples. Just like the video he put up, I don't know if we're apples to apples, to be honest, because I don't remember him saying what cartridge was on the Caliburn, the $150,000 turntable. Uh, if they were the same cartridge, same phono amp, they are closer, definitely, to being a comparison. If they're two different cartridges, it almost makes the test invalid, but that's a different topic. What, what have we proved with any of this? Nothing. I don't know. I just babbled a bunch of stuff and I made you watch for 11 minutes. And that, to me, is the greatest gift of all. So, everybody, take care. Hope I brought up some points from things for you to consider, to chew on, to talk about. Because I make these videos so we can talk back and forth. You certainly can disagree with me, but you can't be rude. Because that's not why I do this. I don't do this to, for people to be rude. I do this so we can talk. And uh, that's it. I also do it for the chicks, I'll be honest with you, you know. I've been getting left and right because nothing the women love more than talking about difference in uh, quality of cables, interconnects, and the sound uh, therein. They love that. Love it. Valentine's Day is coming up. Think about it. All right, bye.